Hello everyone, Aaron here and welcome back to Leak Code. Today we are doing the non-decreasing subsequences problem. But first I need to say I am so sorry for being away for so long. Um, I've had no internet almost all of this week. I had some on Monday, I had the tiniest trickle on Wednesday and Thursday, not enough to actually connect to any websites, but enough to check an email or two. Um, <laughs> It, oh, I, I, I am so sick of it. I'm, I've got shakes from internet withdrawals. But anyway, today I think I have a connection and by next week it should be somewhat more stable. So anyway, on to today's problem. Given an integer array nums, return all the different possible non-decreasing subsequences of the given array with at least two elements. You may return the answer in any order. So four, six, seven, seven, they, they are a non-decreasing subsequence. So we basically need to do all subsequences of length two or more. Whereas here, four, four, three, two, one, this is decreasing, uh, well, non-increasing. <laughs> um, so these two here are the only two that are non-decreasing. My immediate thought here is I don't know how to do this, <laughs> which is not good. Uh, the kind of subsequence problems I'm never great at. The best I, off the top of my head, is exhaustive checking. Just generate every possible subsequence and test it's at least too long and non-decreasing. That might be okay because the, the length is so short, that might be a viable solution. So the, the, the general structure is going to be um, list um, non-decreasing subsequence backtrack of tuple um, extend is goal. So this is all very abstract at the moment. Basically what I want to do um, is to do the non-decreasing subsequence, which takes in a list of, or a sequence of tuples which are either true or false for whether this thing should be considered as part of the subsequence. So the big core of this is backtrack. Now I have a fairly standard um, shape that all of my backtrack things are going to take. So if is goal state yield state else for um, s in extend state yield yield from backtrack s extend is goal and basically this structure is all backtracking Ever. <laughs> Any backtracking you ever do fits this particular shape. All you need to do is write your extend functions for the state and your is goal functions for the state. Um, so the goal is going to be len. state is equal to len nums. So that's going to be effectively, if, if I've collected enough things to mark everything as either in or out of this particular subsequence, then that's a, a goal in this backtrack. And the other part of this is how do I extend it? So what I want to do is I want to for B in true false yield state plus 
be. Um, so if, if I had true, true, false, I'm going to return true, true, false, true, and true, true, false, false. Those are going to be the two options for how to extend it. So that takes care of this backtracking business. The non-decreasing subsequence for boots in sequence, what I want to do is I want to do the subsequence is n for n b in zip nums bulls um, if b. So this takes the nums I was given and my true false tuple and says, okay, keep the ones that are marked as true. And then what I want to do is if len subs is greater than or equal to two and non-decreasing subs yield subs. So how does this non-decreasing work? Um, let's call that masks actually. So this non-decreasing business, a sequence is non-decreasing if for i in range len sequence minus one, if sequence i is greater than sequence of i plus one, return false. If we get all the way to the end of the sequence less one um, and everything has been less than or equal to um, its uh, successor, then this is a non-decreasing sub sequence. Right, so this looked horribly complicated, but actually isn't too bad. Um, parenthesis was never closed. I dropped one somewhere. Let's try that again. Oops, we got a wrong one there. Expected four, six, four, six, seven, four, six, seven, seven, four. Hang on, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I've got too many things here. Four, six, seven, seven. That's correct. Four, six. I've got four, six, seven twice. Why do I have four? Uh, I have four, six, seven twice because there's a. You can do it this way. Or you can do it four, six, skipping that seven with that seven. I mean, that's an easy fix. We just setify the result. And this is now getting hard to read. So masks is equal to backtrack um, NDSs, non-decreasing subsequences is non-decreasing subsequence of the masks unique NDSS is the set of NDSSs. We want to return the list version of that arrangement. So now that's split over four lines, which is probably a bit meh, but anyway. Um, I think I want to turn these into uh, methods just so they're not in the way. Um, so that one there. What's that S from? Oh, that's from there. So, hang on. Uh, let's do this as a dedent. And I want to do self, self, 
new self dot non decreasing. Um, basically, that's pointless because I'm not using the self in any way, but it just shapes out the solution a little bit nicer. Too many S's. Nulls is not defined. Did you mean dumps? Oh, I was using that, wasn't I? Well, now I have a reason to make this a method. Oh. I can't turn this into a set because these are lists which are not hashable. So let's turn those into tuples so that we can actually work with them. List, list are um, NDS for NDS in unique NDSSs. So this is where I'm just doing some munging to do this uh, nested lists that the solution expects. Perfect. Right, is this fast enough? This backtracking is exponentially slow. This is linear in the size of the res backtrack result, which is exponential. So this is still exponential. This is linear in the size of this, which is still exponential. And this is linear in the size of this, which is still exponential. So this is an exponential algorithm. Yay. The question is, is it going to be fast enough? Apparently it is. <laughs> um, excellent. It is not at all efficient. Um, this is probably a bit too abstracted to be efficient. So separating out the backtracking from the non-decreasing subsequences from the non-decreasing, all of that is probably working at too high a level of abstraction. But I like working at this level of abstraction with backtracking because I don't need to think about the specific backtracking I'm doing. This is just a function that I can write off the top of my head immediately for any backtracking problem and then just set it up in a way that makes sense. Is this thing I'm looking at, or what is it I'm looking at? How do I extend it? And have I reached a goal? Easy peasy. Anyway, that's a video. I'm gonna try and edit and upload this video now. Fingers crossed. <laughs> if you see this, I have succeeded. If you do not see this, I will see you next week. Mm.